guys. It's Jim Bounds with Motorhome Rehab Ranch. Uh, and um, let me get rid of these, right? <clears throat> you are seeing me on our new GoPro. Thank you for the contributions and the members. It paid off. We got a little, little camera here. It's about the size of half of my fist. It's kind of ominous looking at it, but uh, whatever. So <clears throat> anyway, so we've got a lot of, uh, we did a poll and had a lot of different comments on things you wanted to talk about. And I think <clears throat> one of them was one of the first ones somebody made. And I think it's probably the best one to start off with. And I, I touched on this a little bit before, maybe, but when you're looking to buy a GMC or, or you're going to get a GMC, <clears throat> what do you consider? Okay, well, when we started this video, you saw that sofa. So when you come here, before we get to look at anything pretty, we sit down and we have a 101. I talk about some things. Because the last thing I want you to say to me, if you get one, is I wish I had known that. I want to make sure you have all the information. You can make your own decision. And back to that thing about my uh, research mom, you know. So I do a lot of this. So I wanted to record this. And next time I can say, hey, go to Patreon, hit this one, and <clears throat> maybe I can save my voice. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. You come in, you want to talk about it, you sit down. And we talk about some things. First of all, I'm going to ask you what you know about them. Why are you interested in one? You know, um, if somebody said, well, I saw it well, do the land speed records, the thing must be really fast. Um, you know, we can slow down a little bit. And uh, uh, I understand it's really good off-road. Well, let's talk a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and I want to be sure that a GMC can do what you feel that it can do. Then, um, this is my 101 on um, what you should look for. Okay. When you're looking for a GMC, usually, well, one of two things. Either you always wanted one, and now you're at the point <coughs> that you think you want to have one, or you saw one, thought it was cool, and you just want one. Okay, Great. Two really good reasons. But when you buy one, what are you going to do with it now? If you don't have a reason to have one, if you don't have a use, if your wife's never going to go camping, brother, <laughs> it's going to be a tough road to hoe. Okay? If you want to make sure that, that a GMC is something you want to do, because there are some really good uh, things about it, but there are really some, some negatives too. Okay? So if you want a travel vehicle, something to go from point A to B, and it'll be a lot of fun, <clears throat> these are great for that. Center gravity is 34 inches off the ground. It's a go-kart. It drives like a, a Lincoln. When they're right, well, no. <laughs> when the suspension is right, when the alignment is right, when things are right, it drives like a Lincoln. So remember, that's a 40-year-old Lincoln. There's a whole lot of parts and a lot of old parts. You have to get that. But, but when you get through the maintenance curve, the wear curve, <clears throat> and you get on top of it, they are wonderful machines. But you got to get there first. Okay. <clears throat> so if you're looking at a coach and you have a need, you know what that need is. First thing you want to do is look for the floor plan. Because now some people say, oh, I'm going to gut that thing and put my, my everything in there that I, I want. <clears throat> Great, good. But that is, that will be the more expensive one. But that's okay. You will have exactly what you want. You're right. But if you get a motorhome, you get a GMC that's in pretty good shape. I mean, it's a survivor that someone's loved over the years. You got to understand these things. People don't just buy them sell. They buy them. They turn into their their child, their pet, and they keep them. So if you get a coach that someone has loved and kept and showered with parts and money and used over the years, <coughs> there's some value in what you're buying. Is in the plumbing. Is in the electrical stuff. Uh, and the bulkheads, in the main bulkheads, in the upholstery. That's part of the value of the coach. Now, if you buy one, that the interior is roached, and we know what that means, right? <clears throat> then you're not going to lose anything by taking it out, taking all the stuff out. And I hope that you bought it at a price that you can take it out, and it's still a good deal. 
But if you're looking to uh, take the survivor, clean it up, add your own touches to it, get it mechanically sound and drive it, if that's the way you're going, first thing you want to do is pick the floor plan. Because if you, know, you can change the seats, you can have two sofas or one sofa or two dinettes or whatever. But if the basic floor plan that you get, if you want a rear bath, look at a coach that has a rear bath in it. Don't, don't look at a side bath and want to change it to a rear bath. That's going to be very expensive, but that's just an estimate, okay? Don't do that. So you say that you want a, uh, you don't care that the, well, the, the wet shower, the two-piece fiberglass wet shower in all the GM floor plan coaches, you know, the Palm Beach, Eleganza, Kingsley, 73s that were uh, uh, Canyon Land and, and all that glacier. <clears throat> the standard GM floor plan, you walk straight in, the, the counter's right there, refrigerator's to your left, there's a hallway, bathroom's to the left, closet's to the right, and there's a 54 by 76 inch bed in the back. Standard GM floor plan. In the front, you can have one sofa, two sofas, no cabinets, full cabinets, whatever. But if the floor plan of the bathroom and the galley and the refrigerator all work for you, then that is what you want to look for. <coughs> if you say you want a rear bath, then look at one that's been set up as a rear bath because you get value out of the infrastructure that's put in it. <coughs> First thing always somebody says is, oh, I want a wet shower. I want a separate bathroom and shower. And all. It'd be great. Problem is, the bigger the bathroom, smaller the motorhome. Right? So, I mean, if you, and, and if you say, well, I, 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 I want a really nice bathroom, look at one that has a separate shower before you call that the positive. Because the shower is a sit-in shower, okay? <clears throat> you can stand it up if you're short. <clears throat> the toilet, when you sit on it, your knees are on the shower uh, opening. Pretty small. If you do like a larger bathroom, you may want to think about getting a getting one of those and taking the shower mold out and make a larger wet shower. Because a wet shower is actually uh, pretty effective and efficient as far as size goes. The GM floor plan, the GM engineer folks, <clears throat> I think they, they spent a lot of uh, uh, engineering, ergonomic engineering, dual use of things. In the original floor plan, and for general use, it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good floor plan to go with because you can do a lot of modifications to it. But it, again, if you do want uh, twin beds or something like that, your best thing is to buy, to look at coaches that have floor plans that would fit in your application. If you do want to build complete coaches, and that's, that's, if that's what you want to do, that's what we do. We can totally uh, take the thing out, even pull the back cap off if you want and build the whole thing brand new. But understand, that's going to be one-off craft work uh, cottage industry, it's, it's, uh, the labor is very costly. It runs the cost, you could easily double the cost of the coach, but that's okay. Still, these are called the, the, the uh, <coughs> cheapest toy in the box. If you're going to buy a quality RV, a decent one, not just a toaster box that looks good, but a nice RV, uh, like a, a Class C carriage coach, or <coughs> a, a, a really nice Tiffin, or something like that, if you want something downsized, which that's what a GMC is, when it was new, it was a full-size coach. Now they call 26 a downsize. But if you want something, it will do what a GMC will do. You don't want to buy used because they fall apart. They're sales-driven. They fall apart immediately. Um, I don't put much value in a used, um, like, 10-year-old motor or something. So <clears throat> entry level for a decent motorhome that you can go on the road and really get some value and feel comfortable and proud of, entry level is $100,000. And now, that, well, I said that for the last couple of years, it's probably 150 by now. So now it enters in a GMC. <clears throat> so you can buy a decent um, survivor for 15 or 20. If you have $25,000 in a survivor that's mechanically sound, I mean, you could drive it. It'll look like what it is, but if it's mechanically sound, you should have $25,000. If you're doing less than, if you have less than that in it, awesome. But don't buy the thing. Don't get involved. <clears throat> if you see one for $10,000, oh, I could probably put a couple thousand and get it working. Maybe. But it's just, that is a mistake looking for a place to squat. That's looking for failure. 
And if you don't, if you're not prepared to, to financially build one of these things, please don't get involved. If you buy a motorhome for less than $10,000, I can almost tell you that that'll be the smaller of the two checks to get the thing mechanically sound. Okay? <clears throat> Maybe not. Throw the dice. I'm just telling you, these numbers work. And if you have one that is mechanically sound, pretty, that you like it, interior is comfortable to you, it has what you want. If it's all the way that you want, if you have less than $50,000 in one of these things, Understand, you've done very, very well, okay? So if you buy a survivor for fifteen to $20,000 and put twenty or 25 in it, so you're at, say, twenty, forty, forty-five thousand dollars $45,000, you're on the road enjoying yourself and being impressed to yourself and others being impressed, just like that guy that spent $100,000. What's that mean? You just spent half price. GMC is the cheapest toy in the box because you can have a nice one, a very nice one, for half the price of having a decent RV. That should be one of the driving motivations. Now, if you buy just because it's cheap, <laughs> anybody that tells you a motorhome can be cheap, just hit them once in a row, because they're not. Nobody's making you buy this thing, okay? <clears throat> it's something you want. The value in it is in you enjoying it. You don't want to flip them. That's why I don't buy and sell them. I'm a piano player. I don't want any, any part of that because there'll always be something that somebody didn't know. And as in the Southern men vernacular, ain't my fault. <clears throat> so look at what you're, 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 you're looking to use this thing for. Look